1972, American oddball art pop combo Sparks released their second album, A Woofer in Tweeter's Clothing, and from it, the quirky, through-composed number, Beaver O. Lindy. <laughs> I'm one minute older, I'm doing all right. I am wondering if this is spoken from the point of view of a very young individual. Hear that like kind of like pipey organ sound. It's just it's just that and uh, so far a uh, Russell male. They say my voice is going to now two organs. And it, yeah, it, that slightly kind of higher organ cut in when it when it went to uh, C minor that they say my I'm one minute older, I'm doing all right. Almost kind of like a walking a thin line between singing and, and, and just kind of talking, like breaking the third, break, breaking the fourth wall. I'll gain valuable experience when you turn out. They say my voice is going to chime. And I am really curious, you know, I've never really uh, probed so far into these lyrics before, and I, I, I got this album when I was 19. It's like playing it just like nonstop for like a year. I'm one minute older and I'm doing all right. I'll gain valuable. You've pre. Those are pretty uh, easy to decide for those lyrics. I'll gain valuable experience in front of you tonight. They say my voice is that 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 makes me th okay. I think it's they say my voice is going to change. You know, I I kind of think um, puberty hitting that that point in life. I'm one minute older. I'm doing all right. I'm thinking. This may be about a, about a boy kind of entering adolescence about to have an experience. It cracks like all it guys flows, then it croaks like old folks home. The gallop, yeah, the breakout. And I, I just love that line. They say my voice is gonna change. It cracks like Arctic ice flows, then it croaks like old folks homes. Yeah, uh, Ron Mayo was such a clever, like comedic, Lyricist. I uh, just real galloping. Kind of like a giddy up, kind of like a stampede type type feel. Yeah, that, that strum, that like acoustic strum, that dun 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 dun. Yeah, you got that. We got the the, the brisk. Get, uh, like electric guitar, then we got that strum pacing thing. Okay, I appreciate I now I, Russell is definitely dominating that with his vocal line, uh, but uh, notice the the what the rhythm section were doing, how they were pacing. It was like. Bum, 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 bum. And, and while the bass boom 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 boom, uh, kind of uh, I, I I don't know like 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 a primitive feel like conjuring up that 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 primitive uh, kind of like almost uh, like cartoon primitivism that was being done by like uh, Hot Legs over in the UK. <laughs> Those harmonies, I guess, um, for an American act, and this band was truly, this band hadn't gone over the UK yet. Um, in fact, I called them combo at the beginning rather than duo, because at this point, they're an actual band with two sets of brothers, plus a, 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 a drummer, you know, five-man five, five man act. And um, and th those harmonies with, with a slightly kind of girlish background vocals, all singing in unison, is kind of what was going on in the UK at this point with like bands like Sweet and and sure you seen me before no that you see much more 
okay, but these kind of structures are totally unlike what we. I, I mean, that, no one really had 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 yet done this kind of through composed structure. I mean, I mean, we, we've just entered like our our third non sequitur movement in 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 the track. Well, I'm the girl in your head, but the boy in your bed. The trash will smell like all the words that you say. You see. You see much more when I was big as can be, as big as TV. I kind of like that circusy carnival type sound. I'm the one that you say, the one that you say, the trash was filling the words that you say. His vocals, his vocals are are just trademark. Um, I, I don't know if it, if it was a style he developed on his own, if it, if it came to him through, like, vocal studies, vocal lessons, but, um, and, and, and notice also the, the accordion and the bass line that are... You see in the before, you see much more, when I'm as big as can be, as big as TV, I the, the accordion I thought I was hearing um, seems to have kind of like melded with uh, that that kind of like wobbly circus uh, keyboard tone. That... I'm your woman says friend, your woman says friend, the London that's dead, the London that's dead. There's something kind of schizophrenic about this. Uh, like, because it, it, you have like these, these kind of like, uh, uh, oh, well, these comedic, kind of like quiet dropout passages um, being kind of like broken up with these really nervy, frenetic moments. Okay, let's catch up with the lyrics again. Um, I think we're going to be led through his state of mind a bit more. Okay, well the chorus... Beaver or Lindy, the name is spelt out. That's the, that, that, when you hear all those vocals in unison, B E A V E R O L I N D Y. Okay. Well, I'm the London that is dead. I'm the boy in your bed. I must give credit to the, um, like, arrangement that went into this to, to take, like, the title and to spell it, to make the hook like a spell out of the title or the spell out of a name and to find, a, find like, a, a melody. That can make it all fit to to fit it into it to to actually create like a hook out of spelling such a long name, like uh, yeah, um, especially uh the way that O Lindy is spelled out that because that's one one of the one of the main hooks of the album when 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 um because they're they're all singing uh the first name in unison, and then and then Russell comes out with that O L I N D Y, yeah. And man, just to make a hook out of the spelling, yeah. Well, I'm the London that is dead. I'm the boy in your bed. That is quite a, an oblique metaphor that I've not really been able to decode. Well, well, sure you've seen me before. No doubt you see much more. Okay, well, I'm the girl in your head, but the boy in your bed. The trash man's valet, the words that you say. You've seen me before, you'll see me much more. Well, I'm as big as can be, as big as TV. A um, bit of sexual ambiguity here. Um, the first uh, line I would kind of interpret as being um, representing kind of a boy and his sexual... Uh, uh, a boy just entering puberty where his voice is changing and his sexual fantasies. So the girl in his head, but the boy in your bed. So... Um, you're by yourself in your bed, basically. Um, but I've been there. I've, I've been the same way. That's what the boy in your bed means. Um, I'm, you know, the, the, the vocal is the same. I'm just like you, you know, I've, I've been there too, you know, fantasizing you know, by myself. The trash man's valet, the words that you say. These lyrics might not have any definite meaning. It could be just kind of random phrasing and stuff, but who knows. Um, you've seen me before. 
you'll see me much more. Uh, that I kind of drives the point I was making a moment ago, I think, even further, that, that this scene scenario is going to be played out many times as this boy goes through adolescence. Well, I'm as big as can be, as big as TV. And that may, might have to do with um, the boy's fantasies of stardom or hitting the big time. Yeah. I'm the words that you say, the words that you say, the trash man's valet, and the words that you say. Uh, so just kind of reiterating the line, some of the, the previous lines in kind of a different order, kind of jumbling up somewhat. Well, you've seen me before. You'll see me much more while I'm as big as can be, as big as TV. Okay, let's... You're, I'm your wallet-sized friend, your wallet-sized friend. Huh. Maybe wallet has to do with something down there, maybe. Like... The London that's dead, the London, the London that the London that's dead metaphor kind of. Um, I'm thinking your wallet sized friend could be like your every every boy's friend, the trouser worm, yeah. Um, the London that's dead though metaphor, I I'm very curious to know. Well, you see me before, you see me much more. I'm as big as TV. And then, okay. Okay, and uh, the some of the action that we're hearing um, on this, kind of introduce everyone knows the the male brothers, uh, Ron and Russell, um, and. Uh, but we have two other brothers in the band at this point. Um, on this album and the one before it, uh, James Mankey and Earl Mankey, yeah. James Mankey bass, Earl Mankey guitar, and drums by Harley Feinstein. And he is really kind of dominating this section. <laughs> See, what was I telling you about? Like taking like a spelling, making it a hook, and then... Listening to it this closely and taking it apart like that, I am really appreciating that, that bump, 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 that, 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 that's, that's going on, right, that, that, that rhythm section that's going on right behind uh, Russell right here. So you And land on a chord that I don't think we'd heard in the song. Yeah, F um, sharp. Yeah, just with kind of a fade out, kind of fuzzy drone right there. And um, yeah, uh, Russell sounding kind of different than he would ultimately sound later on. Although uh, showing lots of uh, a vocal range and, and a bit of... Um, he gets, I guess uh, the, the first track, Girl from Germany, is the one that, that has... Though those kind of trademark like high like okay there was a little bit of it when he was saying trash man's valet but um yeah the uh that that th those real kind of like high leaps in his voice um he hadn't really developed much of that yet he's kind of working more the midway he's actually doing some stuff here that he wouldn't do on those later albums um come to think of it uh i i, I don't know i i you know i'd have to check back to and, and compare um, yeah, but, uh, anyway, yeah, a lot of, um, this track, what I really like about it, what I, what I've always liked about it throughout the, I, I found new things to like about it, uh, while, while just here and now, but, um, over the, uh, back in the day, uh, the thing I most admired was that, um, the quality I most admired was the through composed element. There were a lot of, uh, it just kept on going through movement after movement, and there wasn't much repetition other than that chorus. It had like one verse, and you know, and then a different verse, and then, and it it would kind of like 
certain sections would rather than uh, repeat them throughout the songs, it, it it would maybe like like take like the second verse, which only appears that one time, but it would stretch it out. It would kind of make it sort of like repetitive and and kind of like break it up. It's just a really unpredictable. Uh, a song with a format all its own, and it went through several different styles, too. I mean, and, and they were all hard to pinpoint. I mean, it had kind of like wobbly kind of dream sequence. It had kind of carnival, loopy, kind of like an empty carnival kind of, kind of feel in that midsection. And then kind of the gallop, the stamp, that, that you know, kind of like Oh, just letting the horses run loose, you know. Um, and uh, had those harmonies that... Uh, yeah, just so... Um, George Starostin, uh on his old uh, website, uh, referred to it as Metapop. And he, he, he... It was this... Metapop meaning kind of like uh, uh, music that could... Uh, like pop music that could just go through many different styles um, in the course of, a, of the same song and uh, with with no regard to conventional format. Like uh, 10CC did a, did a few numbers like that um, in their catalog, like particularly on like, oh, I had like three or four of them on each of the first five albums. And then Sparks, of course, uh, predating them by a couple of years. Uh, yeah, uh, Sparks, the original Sparks, the five piece, Two albums on Bearsville, circa 1971-1972. The first produced by Todd Rundgren. Uh, this one produced uh, by James Lowe. Um, the Mankeys and, and Feinstein would, would leave after this album, and then the the males would, would uh, go over to the UK and do their island trilogy over there. It's a great commercial success over there. Um, one of the Mankeys uh, turned up in Concrete Blonde um, like 13 years ago after after this album yeah anyway yeah sparks one of the most unique quirky and original just in a class by their own um from the states or really from anywhere and um always managed to endure themselves more and and perhaps one of the most anglo euro st uh spirited of of american acts yeah and and always had kind of um connected more in in that part of the world anyway for more rubies and sapphires from A Woofer and Tweeter's Clothing, see the directory of albums from 1972 linked in the uh, description below for Red Out Tracks and Purples from this album and many others from that great year. Over um, a thousand albums currently, over 11 pages, yeah, for this and, and by similar artists like, like Stackridge and, and uh, by uh, artists, you know, all across the musical spectrum from symphonic rock to jazz rock to singer-songwriters to folk rock um, to soul and a whole lot more. Yeah. Like and subscribe, follow me on social media and share the video and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the track we just heard, the, um, the arrangement, the different sections, the unpredictability of it all. Yeah, the very uh, odd choice of keyboard sounds and just uh, stylistic shifts. And most importantly, I guess, uh, your interpretation of some of the lyrics, particularly the ones I couldn't quite unlock, or, or just your impressions overall, if, you're, if you had a much... Or, or maybe you know something, maybe you know a backstory that, that I didn't really uh, appear to be, be acquainted with. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear-traveled, Tremex, most signing off.